put my toys away. <laughs> All right, guys. Welcome back to the Unnatural Thoughts podcast. We've got Jared in the room. We've got Billy. We've got Josh. We've got Danny. We got Ben. And we got me, Shannon. Uh, today, we are going to be talking about Sasquatch himself, Bigfoot. Ben, this was your topic of choice. So why don't you go ahead and get us started? Okay. Uh, well, I mean, I'm sure that most of us are pretty familiar with Bigfoot at this point, at least the, uh, you know, the stories that we've heard and the videos that we've all heard up till this point or seen up till this point. Yeah. We yeah. know, uh, or at least there has, according to science, they haven't proven that there's a bipedal uh, ape-like hominid that lives somewhere in the recesses of pretty much everywhere on the planet. Um, so, th I mean, that for me is probably the most fascinating aspect is they're everywhere. Right. I, I think, I believe that there's a possibility that Sasquatch could exist. However, I hope they are never found. Exactly. Yeah. Because once they are found, hunters and poachers are going to be on them like ants on honey. Man. I kind of uh, take offense to that. <laughs> <laughs> the truth I, is, though, you know, it, the, the interesting thing that I found, I watched, um, I've been watching a lot about this stuff over the last number of years. If you check out Tubi and uh, stuff like that, there's like, yep. 25 new documentaries about Bigfoot that have come out in the last four years alone. Yeah. And um, just that fact alone just says to me the amount of interaction that has happened in that community throughout this pandemic has been unbelievable. Like the sightings, the interactions have increased uh, exponentially. And um, to be honest with you, I agree. I don't think uh, it would be in certainly their best interest for us to discover them. That being said, at the moment, I don't think that's anything for them to worry about. I think they know when we're coming. I think mm -hmm. they know when we're coming from miles away. Yeah. And I think they're prepared for us, which is why nobody ever gets the kind of shot that you're like, well, there it is. I mean, right. Right. You see ones that you're like, well, that could be, sure. Yeah. Um, but uh, I don't know if you guys have seen it, but last, I think it was last year, um, some loggers in Alberta, Canada posted a video uh, on a logging trail and they had, they were doing some work and one of them pointed out this black creature in the woods, this dark figure. And they were all talking about it and they started shooting with one of their you know one of their cameras which from far away isn't great you know the, mm, the picture's yeah. grainy mm -hmm. you can't make out what it is but what you can make out is this creature picks up an entire tree and launches it like a javelin and it and they show the trajectory of the tree and you can hear the guys going jesus Christ, did you see that he just threw a tree at us <laughs> like a full tree uh -oh. and to Danny, me, uh, hang on just a second. Danny, is it okay to remove this other, this other one that you had uh, originally logged in with? He's still connecting with audio. Yeah. So. yeah. <laughs> all right, we'll, we'll, all right. <laughs> Danny, is it okay to uh, go ahead and remove this other one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. All right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there we go. All right. Sorry about right. that. Not a problem. So uh, we've got our own personal Sasquatch here now. Where's the hunters and poachers at? <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> it forced me to, to come out of the forest, man. Hang out with you guys for <laughs> All right, Ben, go ahead and continue what you're saying. So we have that one video that, for me, was really, like, just the, the proof alone, just in the size when they did the distance, and they said, this is approximately how big this tree would have been. Hmm. There's just no question. Um, 
for me, I've always felt that there's something out there. I've always felt that there's something to these stories. There's too many stories to just, you know, it's right. kind of, it's kind of like UFOs. I feel like there's just too many to discount it as something that that's just in people's imaginations or mass hysteria or something like that. Right. Um, yeah. And speaking well, of I'm, so I'm many, I'm curious about something. It, yeah. With technology the way it is now, how many of the possible sightings are being photoshopped <laughs> or being edited in, just mm. so that somebody can say, "Hey, look, I saw this." Totally. Totally. Yeah. Absolutely, hundred percent. And being that there's so many stories, every region, every area has its own name for Bigfoot. Um, in Florida, he's known as the Skunk Ape. Yeah. In Ohio, it's the Grass Man. Grass Man. Uh, in Arkansas, it's the Book Monster. Yeah. Uh, Virginia, it's Wood Booger. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Who came up with that one? <laughs> no clue. A uh, five-year-old that seen it. Like a <laughs> that's what it sounds like, yeah. You <laughs> know, uh, in Whitehall, New York, it's the monster of Whitehall. In Missouri, it's known as Momo. Oh jeez, uh, it's the hippie version. Yeah. In uh, Louisiana, <laughs> it's known as the Honey Island Swamp Monster. <laughs> yep. In Michigan, sounds like a roll. In Michigan, it's Dewey Lake Monster. Uh, in Arizona, it's Mogollon Monster. Uh, in Southern Illinois, it's the Big Muddy Monster. And then other areas have it as a uh, Wood Ape, Bushman, Treeman, and Wildman. Yep. So. And then when you expand outside of North America, you've got the Yowie in Australia. Uh, of course, the Yeti in, yeah. uh, you know, the in the north, in the mountains. Um, there's also uh, a race that are considered the same type in the Philippines, but they're smaller. Instead mm. of being large, they're actually smaller than people. But they they're Ewoks. Pretty much That's exactly. what I was going to say. <laughs> That's pretty much exactly <laughs> it, yeah. <laughs> Um, That's where uh, George Lucas got now, his idea, I think. Yeah. <laughs> since you're from Canada, yep. are the Sasquatch and the Wendigos the same thing, <laughs> or are they different? Mm -mm. They're totally different. So the, the Wendigo is more of a Native American and Native Canadian legend, okay. uh, and it's more of a supernatural creature, whereas I, I think Bigfoot is, is definitely at least when we encounter them there's a lot of debate about that and some pretty wow like i've always wondered if like so say before columbus or the pilgrims uh, discovered america if maybe there was a bigger population of them and they might have like somewhat lived in peace with the indians not like hey guys how's it going but you know like just whatever and then once uh settlers and pilgrims and foreigners started to come more into america and america started to grow if they maybe um went into hiding and it slowed down their like reproduction system and who knows maybe like with uh, harry and the hendersons Maybe they have like a natural form of camouflage or something. You know? Yeah, exactly. that that movie is probably like the first time I've ever heard about Sasquatch. Me too. Me like too. you know, yeah, and you're absolutely. just like, oh, a big hairy man, ha ha ha. And then you know, you find out as you get older, like they may be real. And you're like, I'm gonna invite one into my home. <laughs> I, I like the fact that Harry and the Hendersons, one of the first ones, is about a nice one. And right. everyone since has been about murderous rampaging ones. Right. Yeah. 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 And there, I I, a, <clears throat> sorry, go ahead. I feel like there was a uh, a Disney movie or maybe a like straight to video release of uh, of like kids finding a like a baby Sasquatch or yes. whatever. I can't remember what yeah. it's called though. I know Probably. exactly which one you're talking yeah. about. Totally. I remember. You've been pretty quiet over there. What are your thoughts on Bigfoot? Um, 
you know, the way I see it is, I mean, there, there's so much in this on this earth right now that, uh, or it could have been years ago, hundreds and thousands of years ago. Uh, you know, it's funny cause I was talking to a coworker and, uh, we were uh, driving around and uh, I was talking about housing and, you know, hop on this podcast and, and, uh, was talking about, but the first thing he says, Oh God, you can't tell me you believe in that crap. Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, dude, there's so much unknown in the world right now. I mean, right. I mean, you know, thousands of years ago, hundreds of years ago, why can't there be? I mean, right. you know, a Bigfoot, a Sasquatch, you know, is an ape-like creature. Um, I mean, what's stopping them from evolving, you know, to being, you know, the seven-foot-tall, eight-foot-tall creatures, you know, compared to what the apes were, you know, hunched over, you know? Yeah. Right. Uh, why can't there be something like that out there? You know, why can't, I mean, why can't there? Yeah. It's always a question. Why can't there be something else out there, you know? Right. All right. Yeah, my opinion totally. on it. Totally. Yeah, because well, even with the, the oceans, two thirds of them have, still haven't been discovered yet. What's, yeah. What's it? Exactly. yeah. How are we gonna know what, what's, what's all on there? land? They're discovering new species every day. You know, on and land. Exactly, and they've been hiding from us for so long. You know, and that's I mean, the that's the thing. Did any of you guys see the documentary Finding Bigfoot that came out a couple of years ago? Was it on like? Is that the one that's on Hulu right now? I think so. I think it's the one that's on okay. Hulu right now. But I've seen the previews <clears throat> and I it, wanted to watch it, but I've been working so much I haven't really had time to sit down and check it out. But I know I was there's. Impressed. I was impressed. It's. I mean, how much of the footage of them that he caught? How much of it is real? I don't know. But yeah, his yeah. theories and how he comes up with it from a hunter's standpoint, he does a lot of stuff where. He set up the camera on like the side of a remote mountain. And from that vantage point, you could see an entire valley and then like other mountain peaks. Yeah. And he sat down and he set up the camera in front of himself and he looked at the camera and he goes, okay, I can tell you right now, there's two of them watching me right now. He said one on that ridge and one on that ridge. He said, the thing that people don't understand is that they are super intelligent and they know we're coming and we have guns we kill things we they see what we do to the animals they see how we treat the the forest and the animals around them and so i think they're very intelligent they're smart they're like we got to stay away from humans as much yeah. as we can right. um, so he's sort of like they've as our territories have encroached on theirs they've moved back further into the mountains into the wilder parts of yeah places that humans haven't even been yet which i mean still blows my mind that there's places on earth like on the, not even under the ocean but on the planet parts of forests that no humans ever touched right so it's kind of like the, plausible yeah it's like the mole people that live underneath exactly yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. but, i mean you know it's possible it it's like it's like you were saying aliens to me like, you can't sit there and tell me that Earth is the only planet that has life upon it. Exactly. Like, I just, I find that impossible. It, se right. it, seems, it seems a little arrogant, you know, yeah, right? Yeah. To think that we're the only intelligent life in that vast a exactly. size of space, but... And the, I mean, the, when it comes to the Egyptians and all that, man, it's written on the walls. Yeah. All of it. And that's the thing, the people who were here before we were in, the, in, in both our countries knew of these guys before we did. They, they yeah. wrote of, they talked about the wild man of the woods, the hairy man of the woods. Don't, they warned their, their young ones, you go out into the woods, you make sure you watch for the wild man. Yeah. Um, because I think, and this is where I, I started doing a lot of research on it this summer because I start, I start, I think finding Bigfoot started me down the rabbit hole. And from there I was watch. I watched uh, survivor man, Les Stroud. He did a Bigfoot um, uh, episode of his show where he basically, he actually thinks he might've caught one in the background, but more importantly, he was basically able to explain how they can exist without us really knowing about it except through personal interactions. 
and you know the, he talks about the fact that there's there's documented stories from people from severely credible witnesses police officers and you know just everyday people who were like um i'll tell you when there was a guy i was watching who uh bought a house in kentucky it was in the like with the the back backwoods of kentucky and he bought this house the beautiful rolling hills and everything and he was like this place is amazing so he moves in and uh uh i think the first day as he's moving his stuff in he was taking stuff out of the trunk of his car and he said he turned around and he saw this eight foot hairy thing dash out of his garage and he was like what the loses his mind because he's like what's going on here and starts like locking everything twice he's like what so he starts talking to the neighbors they're like oh that's big that's the bigfoot there's a family of bigfoot that live nearby here's what you do put out like a blanket and just cover it in fruit just leave it by the edge of the woods so he was like seriously and they were like yeah the people who lived here before you fed them so that's why he's going to tear apart your garage if you don't leave him something so leave him something and he'll totally leave you alone and that's exactly what they did and apparently he did so that's the kind of stuff that, and this was a guy who was a non-believer was like <clears throat> i've never seen he was like i'd never seen anything like that until that moment and i went i don't know if i can live here <laughs> i don't know if i can share yeah share my space with these things man that's insane yeah uh yeah the hunter and me just kicked in it's like oh uh, i'd be setting all kinds of traps for it then <laughs> <laughs> well and that's an interesting you bring up an interesting point billy because, um there was uh <clears throat> excuse me recently um there were two uh there's a guy who writes these books called missing 411 named david Politis. And uh, his books are really fascinating. They're all about people who go missing in national parks, especially in the US, but in all of North America. And he started off the first one by saying, the crazy thing is there is no national data registry or anything for missing people in national parks. So only family members who happen to know that somebody's missing will go looking for people. So he was like, we got to, you know, they want to deal with that. But his first book, his first movie focused on children that have gone missing in the woods. The, se the second one, uh, I started watching and I was like, oh, wow, it's all about hunters who've gone missing in the woods. Experienced, trained, have been hunting since I was born, since I could walk. Uh, going through and going missing out of nowhere and not just missing no sign of them no piece of clothing no piece of equipment no backpack no nothing they're just gone and through the whole movie i'm like wow this is just a lot of hunters that just bloody up and disappear and not just alone but in groups they go out in groups and one guy one guy's gone they're literally 25 feet apart one guy doesn't come back by the end of the documentary my wife goes i think he's alluding to bigfoot dude and I went, he totally is. By the end of the movie, he full on was like, there's something in the woods that's taking people. Yeah. And I guarantee you, it's bigger than we are. And it doesn't care about our weapons. Once it comes at us, it doesn't care about what we've got. It will use its brute strength and take us away. Right. Like some could just be like, oh, I'm going to hide and live off the forest. But then there's some that could have gotten that taste for blood but like i'm thinking know. like us right like there's so many variations of us you got to figure if there's a good population of them you're going to have your harry's yeah but then you're also going to have your you might have your sasquatch who's had the worst run-ins with people and he's like a sasquatch serial killer right yep. just every human tear them apart that's it Dahmer of the forest right <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Well, no, then, he, then he'd be eating his own. Yeah. Oh, uh, <laughs> wait, yeah. <laughs> well, they are cannibalistic, right? I mean... Yeah. Supposedly. I, I, did, I did want to kind of interject and pose a quick question for you guys. I mean, we all we all know about the iconic video. You know, the iconic video right. with, the, with the long, swaying arms. We all know exactly the what The Patterson-Gilmlin film, right? Yes. Now, yeah. with so much technology... 
now. Honestly, why haven't why hasn't there been much video evidence since with so much going on with satellites, GPS stuff, and so many people that want to see this? So many people that are out there hunting him. Why hasn't there been any more footage really since that? I mean, anything there, iconic. Maybe right? they come out when they need to. There yeah. has been footage. Um, it's not been as well <clears throat> spread as that original one because that was the mm -hmm. first one. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> um, like, I think some like, of it, to be honest with you, I think some of it has to do with. Um, I mean, we as people, uh, I think uh, as much as it's hard to, to say sometimes, I think we are getting better. I think it's just taking a long time for us to get there. But th back then, when, when the Patterson-Gimlin film was taken, I mean, hunters would shoot anything, right? You'd be shooting right. first and ask questions later. So the fact that they were able to get that at all, uh, to me, I think if there's a lack of evidence, it's because of them not because of us. I think they've been like, shit, we need to move. Let's go. Right. Yeah. Like they're here. Put it, they're too close. Like, I feel like they've, they might be big, but I <sighs> think that they can be as quiet as they want to. Like, let's say you're like, you're in the woods hunting, right? Like Billy, you're in the woods, you're hunting. And all of a sudden, like you turn around and you see like a seven foot, eight foot tall, hairy monster behind you. Are you going furries and be like, the hell is that? <laughs> <laughs> I oh, mean... no. <laughs> now, here's an idea that Billy and I were talking about the, uh, yesterday. Uh, it's kind of out there, but what if <laughs> Bigfoot is actually uh, started out as the offspring of a gorilla and a bear? Interesting. Mm. That I don't... I... I don't think that's too far fetched, honestly. I mean, it's just are there gorillas that's, that's in America though? Or did somebody breed them and then they we, escaped? Yeah. Back when these sightings uh, started, what if, you know, because the sightings go back all the way back to when the land bridge between Alaska and Russia was still there. Um, so what if at one point, um, you know, say a grizzly bear and a gorilla got together over in Africa and then eventually they just kind of breed it into a tribe or a pack or whatever right. and began migrating and migrated across the uh, land bridge. Yeah. Or like what if it was like a military experiment gone down <laughs> and escaped? I no, mean, the more birds, you know. I know more... I've also... <laughs> I've also heard the theory, if you see the, there's a movie, um, Attack on Something Ridge, uh, that's, that's all about uh, a, con a distinct connection between extraterrestrials and Bigfoot, that often people, when they see Bigfoot, they'll actually see UFOs around the same time. So there's this theory out there that there may be a supernatural element to them, that they possibly even come from a different uh different timeline or a different right. different universe and somehow they've they got a door here once in a while it's interesting and then i've also heard from some bigfoot theorists uh you know who study from an anthropological uh, perspective that they may just simply have been an offshoot so it went you know Whatever we derived from, apes went this way, we went this way, and, and they think Bigfoot went this way. Right. Um, and so oh. we all started out as the same thing in their minds and then ultimately diverged at some point in our evolution. So, right. Ben, what are your thoughts on, uh, Do you what do you think Bigfoot actually is? Do you think it's an offshoot? Do you think he's the missing link? Uh, do you Me think aliens are involved? <laughs> <laughs> me personally i think uh i don't think it's the missing link i think we i think it's something completely different than us but i do think we share something in common and i believe they're out there and the reason i believe they're out there is because uh i mean when you look at native cave drawings of the wild man of the woods they've been talked about for so long um, you know, you wonder if they've been here longer than we have. Yeah. Uh, but 
I do think there's something out there. I do think there's some bipedal, large, hairy creature that we have not fully identified. Jared, what are your thoughts? What do you think it is? Um, like, you know, uh, Ben was saying, uh, we went this way. Maybe they went that way. Uh, who knows what it is? You know, I mean, I, I don't want to say it's the missing link either due to the fact that maybe it's something in between. Maybe it's just something that happened. Evolution. Uh, maybe it's just uh, something from prehistoric times that didn't go extinct, but there's not as many as there was back then. Mm -hmm. Billy, what about you? What are your thoughts? Uh, I, I think there's people that have just been stuck out for so long in different remote areas that just they all suffer from well we we call it gigantism because you got we got huge people that we we see all the time like andre the giant seven and a half feet tall 600 plus pounds as like then you have like people that this giant people like even in the nba people close to seven and a half seven feet tall eight so feet tall so do you think they could be a combination of suffering from gigantism and lycanthropy? Just because they live out in the woods like they are, they don't have access to hygiene equipment like we do to be able to shave to get haircuts mm -hmm. and everything like that. And depending on your diet, it could make your hair grow thicker in places to stay warmer in the, in the colder, colder climates for adaptation. So... Okay. It's like your but your body your body will change depending on your climate. It's like people in the Philippines and Hawaii have less body hair and darker skin to to live in that in that type of climate. And in the northern regions, like in Norway, Finland, they're hairier people, they're fairer skin to reflect the sunlight away from them. And the hair their body hair helps keep them warm. And they're usually a little bit thicker. To help keep body heat in. Okay. Uh, Josh, what are your thoughts? Uh, honestly, I, I I think it's more on a an evolution theory. Uh, I don't think that they've fully involved evolved to the point where we have, but I would also be curious on their lifespan, mm. as well as their uh, reproduction schedules. Totally. Uh, I'm wondering if their lifespan might be, maybe it's extremely short. So we don't see very many videos or hear stories of baby Bigfoot being seen. So maybe their growth happens really fast. Their lifespan is short. And uh, so we don't really see that happen. The alternative to that is their lifespan is extremely long. Their mating is, or their breeding is very short. So maybe right at the end of their lifespan is when they breed. So there's not very many of them out there in general, in comparison to uh, the human population. Right. Uh, so I'd be curious to know those two factors to really try to figure this out because we don't, I've tried looking, I, you don't see hardly anything on a baby Bigfoot. Uh -huh. You know, is baby Bigfoot just a, a bear? And maybe the next step above bear becomes Bigfoot? Mm -hmm. I don't know. But that's just something that I was thinking about while everybody was talking, but right. Danny, mm -hmm. what are your thoughts? If Sasquatch exists, what do you think he is? Um, you know what I really think? Um, I, I think there's a, it is derived off of something. I feel like we're all derived from something or, or someone. Um, I almost feel like, you know, like we're kind of derived from like Neanderthals, you know, mm -hmm. kind of, um, and then, in my personal opinion, I feel like the the Bigfoot would be more more of an ape, just because of the long extremities. Yeah, I mean it has. I mean they're as tall as they are, yes, but they have the long swaying arms. You know, just kind of like an ape. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you know, supposed facial features. Obviously, the hair. 
um, kind of like you guys were saying, you know, uh, we went, you know, one way, you know, and then ape evolved this way. Now, obviously, the ape itself is more common, clearly, um, but uh, I feel like it's 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 just derived, my personal being from an ape, you know, or something like that, or maybe a a ape is derived from a Bigfoot, <laughs> you know, it's just a smaller version that walks on all fours, and, and I mean, who knows? Mm. I, uh, I don't know. That's what, that's what I feel. Okay. Uh, me personally, there's too many variables to really determine uh, what I actually believe Bigfoot could be. Uh, could it be like it, some uh, ancient gorilla breeding with an ancient bear? Possibly. Uh, could it be an offshoot of Homo uh, erectus? Possibly. Um I don't really believe the alien theory. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, I, I believe there's a possibility of aliens. I don't believe Bigfoot is connected to them, though. No, I'm with you. Um, oh, the government said yeah. aliens exist, so. Uh, it could also be a possibility. Billy's uh, theory there. Um, that it could oh, just be remote people, right? Right. 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 Uh, now, going through uh, on Wikipedia, I found some of the uh, uh, things they uh, demonstrate or people have found uh, that they demonstrate. Um, like uh, Bigfoot supposedly throws rocks as territorial displays and for communication. Uh, others claim include uh, wood knocking behavior theorized to be communicative. Uh, structures of broken and twisted foliages seemingly placed in specific areas have been attributed by some to be Bigfoot behavior. And we're talking full trees, too, bent over, like full-on trees bent in an overlay shape like that right. in multiple places. Uh, lodgepole pine and small tree, other small trees have been observed bent, uh, uprooted, or stacked in patterns such as weaved and crisscrossed, leading some to theorize that they are potential territorial markings. Uh, some instances have also included entire deer skeletons being suspended high in trees. Uh, amateur Bigfoot researchers called the Olympic Project claimed to have discovered a collection of nests and they had primatologists study them with the conclusion being that they appear to have been created by a primate. Uh, many alleged sightings are reported to occur at night, leading to some speculations that the creatures may possess nocturnal tendencies. However, mainstream science largely disputes this claim, as all known apes, including humans, are diurnal, with other lesser primates exhibiting nocturnality. Uh, alleged vocalizations such as howls, moans, grunts, whistles, and even a form of supposed language have been reported. Yep. There's a, there's a great story um, from a guy, I think it was back in the 50s or 60s, that he came out with this story that he'd been camping in California somewhere near where the Patterson-Gimlin footage was filmed. And he had, uh, you know, tied up his horse for the night and everything. And he was lying in his tent and all of a sudden something pulled him out of the tent and threw him over their sh over its shoulder and carried him off into the woods. And he said all he remembers is that he was thrown down on the ground. And when he came out of the, the sleeping bag, there were these very, very large, uh, very hairy beings all around him. And they were talking to each other, but of course he couldn't understand, according to him, what they were saying. And uh, he claims that he got the. This is one of the one of the kind of out there stuff. But he claimed that he got the impression that they were they brought him there to mate with their daughter. They had a female teenage like Bigfoot. <laughs> so that was one that I read, and I was like, jeepers, that like. I mean, was that just a nightmare? Did you did you have? Or... 
because that's a bad camping trip. Yeah, it's it is. Not. Uh, well, I agree. They couldn't, they couldn't <clears throat> made it with him. Exactly. But, <laughs> but the, which, the, may, uh, which begs the question: How do big feet, Bigfoot mate? Do they mate like dogs, or they do they mate like humans? That's a good question. Uh, yeah. Um, as long I know, as yeah, I'll tell you. Tell you one thing that I thought was probably the most um, astute uh, perspective after at one of the end of one of these documentaries I was watching, these guys had gone into the woods and they were filming everything they could. They'd done everything right. Set up trail cams, everything they could to catch these things. And they said they're there. And so they were there in the middle of the night. And all of a sudden the, there's like three of them sitting there. And all of a sudden this, this rock just landed within about five feet of them. And it was like a decent sized rock too. And they were like, oh, so something is here and there. So they're doing their thing and everything and they catch nothing. And as the thing ends, you're like, okay, once again, another one of these hour long documentaries I wasted to see nothing right. again, right? And the guy, as he's coming out, he stopped and he went, you know, something just occurred to me. In all the time that we've been filming in all the time that we've been taking pictures and setting up trail camps, I've never thought to look up. He was like, though these things live in, like they seem to make nests or probably live in caves or something like that, they can climb like nobody's business and quietly too. Mm -hmm. So he was like, everybody takes their shots to Bigfoot like sideways. Everybody's looking straight ahead and he was like, what happens if we start aiming everything up in the trees? What are we going to catch? So I thought that was just an interesting right. perspective, right? I, I'm not going to lie, Shannon, your question about how they mate, <laughs> it, it, it makes me wonder if they're packing red rockets, man. <laughs> <laughs> like, now I'm just kind of like, that. wait, what? <laughs> Put, putting Ron Jeremy to shame. <laughs> <laughs> but i i read a story about a guy that was hunting and he was like camping and he shot and killed one and he buried it but then he couldn't find where he buried it have you have you heard that story too yep. yeah i think so yeah i heard that one of the things i was watching one documentary with this uh this one guy who was an anthropologist who was talking about how one of the he said one of the things that people throw out as evidence of the non-existence of Bigfoot is the fact that no one's ever found one dead. Right. Um, and th that that's been a big argument. That's like, we find lots of things dead. You don't find Bigfoot dead anywhere. But his argument in return was you very rarely come across a dead bear, uh, a dead bear, unless it was, you were hunting it and you killed it. He was like, you very rarely come across a dead bear that's died from natural causes, just lying there. They yeah. bury their dead. Mm -hmm. There's when their family dies, they bury them. <clears throat> so he was like, I theorized that uh, I think Sasquatch <laughs> buries their dead. They take them with them and they bury them somewhere. Which um, could lead credibility to the idea that a Sasquatch could be an offshoot of both a bear and a, and an ape. Because yeah. both both have that kind of ritual with their with their dead, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or at least bears do, I know. But the other one was the 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 movie. There's a movie that came out by um, I think it was Eduardo Sanchez, the guy who did uh, Blair Witch Project, uh, a movie okay. called Exists. Um, and one of the things that I noticed about it was uh, that he used something that somebody actually found, and this was the one that I was like, well, that on top of trees being bent over and stuff like that, that you could often write off as well. I mean, a guy could climb up there, tie a rope, haul it down with a couple of guys, you know, um, somebody came across a tree that had been torn out of the ground by with, the, with the roots and then turned upside down and jammed back into the ground from the top. So the roots were all up facing. And he stood there for hours going, how the hell did this happen? Like he just, he, 
he couldn't think of any way that that would have happened. No human being can pull it up, root a giant tree and turn it upside down and ram it back into the ground. You probably could with some heavy equipment, but why would you do that? Uh, and in order to use the heavy equipment, it would, it would pretty much have to take a hold of the roots in order to slam it back in. It wouldn't yeah. really be able to do it grabbing onto the around the shaft of it. Yeah. So you have Andy, to make you're, a path. You have you're to in make a path. construction, so. <laughs> I say you have to make a path to even get to, you know, that say tree regardless. I mean, right, right. You know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now, I will fully admit I am nowhere near as uh, knowledgeable on Bigfoot and Sasquatch as Ben appears to be. I'm more the serial killer and ghost guy right. of the group. Um, so your insights have really brought a lot to the conversation, Ben. Thanks. Thank I, yeah, I'm, been, I'm passionate been about this stuff. <laughs> uh, I've, been, I've been hunting for over... I'm, I'm 40 years old. I've been hunting since I was eight years old. And right. I've been... I've hunted in all 50 states. I've hunted in 90 countries. See, it's there's, weird that you wouldn't have come across something, right? Yeah, it's just it's so it's so odd because I, me and my grandpa would take trips up to Canada all the time, up to Quebec. We'd go up in Alaska in the out, outbacks, down in Australia in the outbacks. I went with me and my buddies. It's like there's stories ev all over the world. Yeah. yeah, and it's like that Brigney, they they there were certain parts of Australia they would not let us go. Yeah, because they have the Yowie. And it's or like something like that. It's like you, you we we do not no, we do not go here. It's like mm. this and there was like there was like weird stuff like okay, it's like you say we don't hunt here, we don't hunt here. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like same in South South America was the same way. It's like we could hunt yep. in certain areas and we'd get to a certain point and our guides would be like, Nope, we're done hunting here. Right. Do some countries count where they may be been sighted or they might know where they live is like sacred ground maybe well most of the yeah. people i go out with are native people right it's like when when i was hunting before i got out of the marines i they would i i'd find the natives and i'd go hunt i go hunt with them like in the philippines i'd go hunt with them and i'd say okay where are my boundaries what can i do what am i allowed to hunt for as like, what do I need to use? Because I didn't always use a gun. Like in Samoa, I was only allowed to use stone knives and spears. That was it. And South America, it was bows and arrows. Mm -hmm. And we, we had to make our own own stuff to do it because that's the way that they, they wanted it done. Now here in the States, I could use whatever, <laughs> as big calibers I wanted to use <laughs> to hunt whatever I wanted. Yeah. They really don't care. And it's same in Canada. But every country I've been to and that I've hunted in, it's like, hey, these are our rules. This is how you hunt. And it's like, these are certain spots. You don't go here. You don't do this. Don't do this. It's mm. like, this is fine, but do not cross. Like, we'd come to, like, in, uh, down there, there was a ravine. And it looks like it literally was just carved out of, like, the Grand Canyon. But it was only, like maybe four or five feet across but it was like 400 feet down mm. and it's like we do not cross on the other side of this it's like we will go up to where it ends and we'll walk around but don't ever go down in there because you won't come back out oh, wow. that's scary and i was like okay hey you guys are in charge not me i'm just here to hunt because <laughs> right. we were going after uh we we're going after dingo and uh crocodile at the time so All right, so I think we're starting to uh, get to a point where we're going to be going around in circles. So <laughs> probably, <laughs> Jared, what are your final thoughts? Uh, my final thoughts is I honestly don't believe like we will see one up close. Like I think it'll just continue to be pictures, due to the fact that if you get them on picture, I feel like it'll mostly be like a. Uh, a camera out in the woods that's set up, you know. Um, 
I, I don't think they will ever be like, in here we have an alive Bigfoot. We might find a burial ground, open, but I, I I don't think we're ever to see one alive in a cage at a circus or alive at a government facility. I don't think they're ever being zoos. You know, I think it'll just be, I think it'll continue to be a myth. Billy, what are your final thoughts? Uh, like I said, it's like I've been all over the world and I, you hear stories, but until we actually physically see one, I, I'm just going to go with it. There's they're just hippies living in the woods that had just gone stir crazy. Josh, what are your final thoughts? Yeah, you know, honestly, I don't know. I like Jared's thought. We're not going to really know anything. It's going to be a myth for quite a while. Uh, I don't think we'll ever get to the point like, uh, what is it, a progressive commercial? You know, they're sitting there interviewing him and he, <laughs> oh, hey, big boy. My name is Daryl. You know, so I don't think we're going to get to that point. Uh, it would be great to get to that point and nah. sit down next to him and find out what's going on, but I don't think we'll ever actually know. Okay. Danny, final thoughts. You know, wouldn't that be great in, uh, in our country for a time like this to actually come together and, and have that excitement for, like, <laughs> adventure, <laughs> you know, that we just don't have anymore. You know, in my you know, you have, I, I named multiple things. NASA it was exciting. It was a, it was a countrywide, nationwide, uh, worldwide thing. You know, just discoveries and, and exciting things and of time that really bring people together. Yeah, I mean, this could be obviously one of those things. You know, that really can kind of bring people together and kind of just, uh, you know, get everybody back on the right track. You know, uh, other things. Yeah. Aside. Um, but yeah, I, ultimately, I just, I honestly, I'm with you guys. I just, I don't feel like we'll ever see one in our lifetime. Um, I mean, the excitement is out there still. I mean, obviously, with you know, you guys are pretty experienced, you know, for the most part with, with the situation uh, with, with this uh, with Sasquatch. Um, but, you know, the excitement's out there. The wonder is still out there. Um, I just think that as a whole, we're not going to try hard enough to try to find anything out there, you know. Um, and I think it will kind of just remain, uh, you know, on the voice recordings, the the, the videos and the pictures and I, th I think it won't gain as much steam as we all would like it to um, i believe something's out there for sure um i just don't know if we'll yeah ever find it you know we'll just constantly keep searching i just don't think we'll ever find anything but. i'm gonna give my final thoughts and then ben since you're our expert uh we'll circle back around to you um my final thoughts are that I think there's something out there. What it is, I don't know. If it's a hippie living out in the woods, I don't know. Um, or if it's an offshoot of primates, who knows? All I know is that I hope that one is never actually found. Because once they are, they will be hunted to extinction. Um, I, 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 I have, since, since we decided to talk about this, I have thought a lot about it. And honestly, I, I hope that if anybody does actually find a Sasquatch, they keep it to themselves. I really do. Uh, I don't, I don't want them found because they'll, that'll probably be the last we see of them. So, we'll ruin it like everything else. Yeah. <laughs> so, Ben, go ahead. Uh, thanks. <laughs> yeah. Uh, to be honest, I think um, my final thoughts are I do definitely think there's something out there. I think there's enough evidence to support that. Um, I also think that there's enough of them that there's as much variation between them as there is amongst us. Uh, and so I think you can find all kinds out there just, and I say this just from the sheer number of documentaries I've sat through over the last number of years, um, from ones in Australia to here. And again, they very rarely catch anything of major significance in these documentaries, but there's enough out there 
that something's out there that we don't fully understand. I think I'm with you guys that I think it's in our best interest and their best interest if it remains a mystery, at least for as long as possible until we get our stuff together. Right. But I will say, if you're at all interested in the topic, I just finished reading a series of books by a guy named Tom Lyons called Living Among Bigfoot. Uh, Tom Lyons bought a place right in the heart of Bigfoot country, and he's had nothing but problems since. He's got, I think there's 18 volumes in this series. Um, I've only read the first five, and they're unbelievable. I mean, if they're if they're fake, they're a great read. If they're true, the implications are insane. Okay. Um, so next week, we have our choice. I know I've brought up to you guys uh, some today. Um, and I know I created a schedule a while back. We haven't really stuck to that schedule. So why start now? <laughs> <laughs> Should we talk about the bodies being found buried in freezers all over uh, North America? Or should we talk about the town that dreaded sundown? In Texarkana, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. That's a good one, because that one we would have to profile. Yes. Right? And I actually did the math today. Um, if the killer, the phantom killer, was on the low end, 25, he'd be 100 years old today. So he'd, he's likely dead. Most likely, yeah. yeah. Uh, for those of you who don't know the, uh, the town that uh, dreaded sundown, there's been two movies based on it. One was a remake of the original uh, that's what inspired uh, Jason Voorhees' original look with the uh, potato sack over the head. Uh, is a killer in the 1940s. Uh, I can't remember exactly how many people he murdered. I think he attacked eight and killed five. Uh, but it was in Texarkana, uh, which is right on the border of uh, Texas, Arkansas, and... Is it Arizona? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Uh, it's technically in Texas, but they consider it that they unofficially it's its own state because it's right on the border of the three. Isn't that the place that has the like uh, memorial thing to it? Yeah. And you can stand in each state on like different sides? Yeah. Okay. So which. Jared, what's your pick? The uh, the bodies found buried in freezers or uh, the Phantom Killer? Well, um, we've done the first one we did was like a current situation, right? The, the second year. one, yeah. The second one we did was, um, man, I can't even think. Well, what did we do? Last Zodiac. Week? <laughs> okay, so that was a past. This one we did is all the time, kind of. Yeah, so. so, I don't know. I think we keep the tradition going of, you know, let's do a past one. Well, that could be from the past or, yeah. You know. Billy, what's your vote? Either or is fine with me. <laughs> it's like I'm not really too picky about it. Just like try to do some research on some of this stuff. It's like I've got family in Texas. Like I could probably call them to ask them about it. Okay. Nice. Josh, what's your vote? Yeah, I think I'm leaning towards uh, Texarkana. By the way, Louisiana. Arizona is quite a ways away from it. Okay, yeah, that's on the other side of the state. I don't have a yeah. map in front of me, so I, well, I don't know my state. How dare you? you. <laughs> that's, a, that's a pretty big uh, step. Yeah, that's huge. <laughs> Danny, what's your vote? Uh, I think Texarkana it is. All right. And I don't even think we need to do me or Ben to – no, we're, I'm in for that. <laughs> right. So we'll do, do it. We're going to be next week. We'll be talking about the town that dreaded sundown, Texarkana and the Phantom Killer. That's awesome. Awesome. Uh, awesome. So thank you, everyone, for joining us here on Unnatural Thoughts, the podcast. Uh, we were joined today by Jared, the host of Masters of the Geek First. 
uh, along with Billy, my longtime associate at Comagin, uh, Josh, who is a uh, former army, and he is the head of the American Legion in his area. Uh, Danny, who is a construction worker and a new father, so he's got plenty of time on his hands to join us. <laughs> Congratulations. I mean, it's, Congratulations, it's, man. Now, I mean, yeah, I got plenty of time, man. <laughs> well, only four kids? And, thank you, thank you. Only four. Only four. <laughs> and Ben, who narrated my book, Jack the Ripper, The Man Behind the Blade. Uh, so if you find it on Amazon, buy it. It's Pick also, it up. It's also available on Audible. Uh, and if you need any audiobook recording, check out Ben Hunter on ACX. Totally. So I've been Shannon, and this has been the Unnatural Thoughts Podcast. And we'll see you next week when we explore the Phantom Killer and the Texarkana murders. Take care, everyone. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss a single video. Give us a like, leave a comment below, and please share the video with your family and friends. I've been Shannon, and this has been Psychology of the Unknown.